What's going on everybody? This video is highlights of a Twitch stream I did all about app landing pages or app marketing pages. Uh, I reviewed about 10 of them on stream and there's some really, really great ones. And like I said, I just cut together the highlights for this video so you can just get like the most informative parts. But if you are interested in joining these, you know, Twitch live streams that I do uh, every Tuesday, the iOS dev live streams, check it out, twitch.tv slash Sean Allen. But onto the clips. And again, look at it from like a consumer's point of view. Like if you were, if you were searching for a digital photo frame app, like would this landing page entice you to buy one? Uh, another thing I want to touch on is why even have an app landing page in the first place, right? Most people that download an app, they're going to grab their phone and they're going to like go to the app store and search on the app store. Um, most of the time, right? However, people still do Google. And the whole point of having these landing pages is like Google SEO. So when people are like Googling for apps, you know, they can come here, check out your page. Cause let's be honest, sometimes the app store page, uh, it doesn't really like convey all the information you want to convey. Um, like you'll see on some of these uh, landing pages. Okay. So digital photo frame app. <clears throat> so see, it just basically tells you right off the bat of the value proposition, uh, meet the new digital photo frame app, the most gorgeous and powerful photo player application for the iPad iPhone. So these look like simulator screenshots and yeah, you can kind of see that the, that's exactly what they are. So you got a nice big screenshot of what it does. Um, I kind of, this is like you selecting your, your phone. I kind of wish you could see the, uh, like what it looks like the, cause you're, you're getting a photo frame here. Um, but just scrolling real quick, this is a very nice looking, very clean, feels very Apple-y, doesn't it, right? It, how it fades in as you scroll down, little slight animations, kind of feels like you're looking at like a, a Apple site. But here, this is what I was talking about, right? If the, if the product is like a photo frames app, I would love to see what it looks like, like as a photo frame, like here in this picture, my, just my opinion. I think this picture should be like the, the hero image that they call it right here right? Because this just looks like a, a basic collection view app. Maybe that's just the developer in me, developer in me kind of coming out. But I think as a consumer, what I would want to see from this app is like I said, uh, this picture right here, because this is this is what the product does. Beautiful photo frame app. Um, but anyway, I really like this landing page. Let me know what you think. Uh, again, feels like Apple. See what, we, what else we got here. We got testimonials. Okay, some app reviews here. Uh, people love seeing this, by the way. If you're building a landing page, I would highly, highly recommend um, including re like reviews, testimonials, uh, especially like these ones. You can tell these are like real reviews that are just right off. You don't know if they're the app store or somewhere else, um, but that way you can tell they're legit. It's because sometimes when you see like a picture of some random person in like a one line comment, like you can just make that up. But these look like real like app store reviews. So I, I like seeing that FAQs. Yeah, this, this is a pretty in-depth, a lot of landing pages, just real quick, a little bit of information right away. Uh, this one looks pretty in-depth. Um, so yeah, I'm really, I'm really liking this. Um, I would say this is probably on the more complex end, but again, if you're making a product, uh, I would definitely go, go above and beyond about, um, okay. So introducing myself, writing. Okay. So this is great too, including your story. Like people love the, a, a very common misconception about apps on the app store is that, um, like people think it's always like a, a corporation or some big mega company behind these apps. People don't realize that oftentimes it's just one person like making this app. So in this about section, he tells the story of himself. Like I'm not, I don't have time to read it. <laughs> We've got a bunch more to get to, but you can see like he's giving personality behind it. You know, hey, I had a pregnancy. I wanted to see pictures of my kids. I'm assuming I haven't read this. <laughs> um, but I, again, the, the big thing there is to uh, give personality behind the app. Let people know like, hey, I'm just one person creating this app and they're more likely to support and, and go easy on you on the uh, like the bugs and the, the bad reviews, hopefully. Anyway, I think this is a digital photo frames app. I think this is a really good uh, website, honestly, to play that. Um, you got picture in picture, full screen, lower thirds. Uh, the best combined experience for those online and in-house. Uh, so it looks like uh, it's a good way to like, if you're giving a presentation at a conference, also kind of live stream it here, import your content. Is this a video? Okay, here we go. We're gonna get, give mostly some, some cred here. Uh, I think you guys can hear this, 22 seconds. What I liked about that video uh, mostly is that it was 22 seconds. A lot of times you'll see people put like a five minute video, which is great, like that explains everything, but you know, people have short attention spans. So what I like about this landing page, you get all the information, a lot of screenshots, and then that 22 uh, second video is like perfect. Again, don't spend five minutes. People aren't going to watch that. 20 seconds, great. What I think would be cool mostly just to avoid confusion because you're making me do math. You shouldn't make people do math, <laughs> right? If, so when I see the price here, it's $79.99 a month. Also, this is kind of small. 
I would, I, I don't know if this is like a plug-in or something, but um, like it's kind of small to see the price there. Uh, and then when I hit yearly, it goes to 79.9 a year, but I got to do math. I'm like, okay, eight times 12 is this. Yes, that's less than 80. Um, if you did like a something, something per month under this to show the monthly savings, uh, I think that'd be very, very uh, helpful. All right, moving on to Spendstack. This is Jordan Morgan's app. I featured this on Swift News. He also does a, a blog uh, kind of documenting this whole indie app creation that's kind of inspired me to, uh, you know, build my own app and, and do a lot of stuff with my app and kind of share my journey as well. So, um, yeah, anyway, I know a little bit about this app, but uh, it's a smarter list that calculate how much items cost and to the penny. So you can see he's underlining like the, the important words here. So he has a video as well. So watch video. Let's watch it. See how long it is. 45 seconds ago. Under a minute's the key here. Hopefully that's not too loud. But already tell it's a high quality video like this. And you're, you're giving a first impression here, right? People are gonna see this video and like automatically assume the app is quality because this video is really high quality. The video is high quality. I just assume the app's gonna be quality. So I, I am like 10 times more likely to download this app because of that video. Yeah, I think this is a really, really good uh, landing page for sure. Uh, built for iOS, all the features you'd expect in best in class app. Uh, so I like, so this is basically a list of features. And so I try to avoid the, you know, walls of text. So I like how Jordan did the, uh, little icons. This is more like visual design right now, what I'm getting into, right? The icon, little, you know, header, and then like one sentence of text, right? Yeah. It's three lines, but it's kind of big text. So it's not a lot to read. Very skimmable, very easy to like you can just skim over just the headlines and see kind of all the features it has. So definitely, definitely really uh, like that he did that. Pre press kit, let's talk about this press kit, see what that, that is. Okay, this is for like, uh, if you wanna feature it. Um, also a really good thing, This uh, I'm glad I clicked on this because if you are trying to get your app featured on like, whatever, TechCrunch, 9to5Mac, whatever, you know, Mac Stories, whatever will like feature apps, uh, having a press kit is a really good way to ease that Trends. I don't know. I don't, I don't know what words I'm using, right? Like reporters are, are lazy. That's horrible. I shouldn't have said that, but they, it, the easier you make their job, the more likely they are to feature you, I think, right? If you have a, a press kit and everything is laid out for them and your app looks great, they're like, hell yeah, let, let's do this. Um, but if you make them work and make them dig, like your app has to be amazing for them to like want to dig and do that. That's what I was trying to say. But again, so Rick, kind of like what you said here, uh, this is a very, very simple, but effective landing page. This is what when you hear landing page, this is typically what it is. Real quick splash, uh, information, done. You know what I mean? Uh, where again, like I said, digital photos is like a full-fledged website. So this is more of a traditional landing page. Check out the app store. Uh, look here for more screenshots of the app. Cool, yeah, so so overall I like it. Clean, neat, nice, right to the point with the features. I, I kind of wish there was more pictures. Kind of wish I didn't have to click into the app store to see more screenshots. Um, that would be my, my only piece of feedback. Um, yeah, like maybe if like you had this blurb and then like down here at the bottom, you had like three phones lined up just to show off the other screens, like, you know, maybe these three screens uh, down below. Um, but again, that's a small nitpick. Overall, clean, simple, uh, effective uh, landing page. I do agree. If you have a, if your app is like iPhone slash iPad compatible, like I think showing both is is uh, good too. Kind of like Spenstack did uh, here at the top. You got the iPad, iPhone. Uh, I, I like that. I kind of wish this was at the top. Um, I, so if you saw me, I was clicking in here right away before I even looked at like what the app did, like the value proposition. So the value proposition should like hit me in the face right away. Um, so I would love to see that like up here. So I know what the app does right away, like without having to like kind of dig for it. Also another, I shouldn't say pet peeve, but I think this is a wasted opportunity right here with this uh, screen app because it shows me nothing. Like it shows me the welcome screen with the app's logo. Um, you know, show me something like with the content in it, like here, the, like the news or, or something like this. Um, again, I just, this is the first thing people see. Uh, I think it's, you're being wasted on a welcome screen. I think showing like the main feature of the app on this screen, I think would be more effective uh, than the welcome screen. Just my two cents. Um, yeah, again, like, like we talked about earlier, don't bury the lead kind of, if you've ever seen the heat maps of like how far people scroll down a website, I don't know if you've ever seen those, they, they have those, right? Where like most people don't scroll like past here. You know what I mean? You're, you're every like little bit down the page, you're going to lose a percentage of the audience. So that's why this like hero image, like this top part, like needs to be awesome. Become a curator so you can like actually help out. Okay. We got a video uh, again where this is way down at the bottom. My personal opinion as a, as a consumer, 
I would love to see, bam, hero image, that. Maybe like one more value prop and then video. Like people love watching videos. Like they don't want to read a web page. They probably want to watch a video. Hopefully this isn't super loud. Oh, and it takes me, kicks me all the way to YouTube. Yeah, see, this is a good video. Again, it just shows off the app real quick, 20 seconds. Um, yeah, I think this should be <laughs> like near the top. Uh, I wish the video was embedded in line. That's a very good point. Kicking people out of your website to YouTube is probably not great. Uh, I definitely want to do that. All right, so podcast alarm. Wake up inspired. So right away, a podcast alarm, the name kind of tells me what it does. It's kind of obvious. Wake up inspired. Um, <clears throat> so download and create a list. Of your, I wish this was bigger text. It's kind of small. Uh, download and create a list of favorite podcasts. There's thousands to choose from. Wake up. I, I like seeing animated GIFs. Like videos are cool, but like the animated GIFs where it's just automatically playing, those are really, really good too. Again, this is back to my pet peeve. This is this looks like it was done on like an iPhone 4. <laughs> Maybe an iPhone 5. My, my point is this looks kind of dated right? It looks like an older phone, which again, as soon as I come in, the first thing I see is this old phone. It makes me think like, oh, this app's probably not up to date. Like they don't keep this app up to date. It's a dead app. I'm not saying it is. They just submitted this to me. So it's probably not. My point is it's just the, uh, uh, the first impression I would get from seeing this, thinking it was an older app. Maybe it's not even up to date. Uh, the pink on the blue is harsh on the eye to read. Good point. And will make the reader, uh, make it harder to read some with colorblindness. Very good. Oh yeah. Like look at this contrast on the right here on the home and the beta test. You can't even read that pink stuff. So very good point. And I, I talk about this a lot in like Swift news on like having proper contrast uh, in your apps, um, not having like, uh, yeah, there's like a certain like contrast code. And I do a lot of that in like the design section of Swift news. Um, but yeah, this is a very good point here. Uh, pay attention to your color combos. Uh, yeah, so these are, like you said, these looks like screenshots or snippets, just the way they're they're cropped. Uh, there's a couple uh, programs out there that will do like screenshots for you, like on an actual device. I would, you know, take the time to uh, look into those, like you saw with like Spenstack, right? Um, you know, he didn't create this himself. These are like iPad and iPhone templates. So you just kind of put your screenshot in. But this looks like way nicer than you see um you know, these kind of things. And, and I don't mean to do this to like bash or anything like that. That's not what this is about. Trying to give constructive feedback um, to kind of improve the page and then also give tips uh, to make your perspective landing page that, you know, you out there may build uh, to be much, much, much better. Uh, yeah, you can download from the Apple site. Yep, Renegade, uh, good, very good point. Uh, you can download, click on that link. You can download all the, uh, you know, these little things like you saw on Spenstack. So like I said, it's not, it doesn't require a ton of work to get some good looking screenshots. So that's why when, uh, again, my personal opinion, um, when I see, you know, things like this, I, I think it's very easy to upgrade that and make it look good. So get this back to the right length here. Um, so anyway, uh, I love the thought it looks cool, but I think things are moving too fast is my kind of thing. Like I can't even see what's going on on the screen. So slow the animations down. Like when you see Apple do something, it's like animating like super slowly. Um, so I think a quick fix would be to slow the animations down about allegory. We're going to the next page. Okay. Uh, giant wall of text. I would use some, some better formatting here. Again, think about you as the person coming to this site, right? You come to the site, you're gonna be like, holy shit, I'm out. <laughs> like giant wall of text. Probably not. You can probably break this up with some like images in between, make the text bigger. There's there's some formatting and you know visual hierarchy type tricks you can do with like images uh, and stuff like that to break this up a bit and make this more reader friendly. You got to realize people don't have like high attention spans. So the easier you can make it for the reader, I, I think Patrick, to your point, like we're developers, we don't think about that. But if you just try to flip it a little bit and be like. If I was a reader, like, would this be easy for me to, to quickly skim this and get all the best information uh, out? 